westward, past the red cliffs of Devon to Seagirt, Cornwall, to the land where spring comes early, where the farmer leaves his cattle out all night through the winter, where the botanist can find 200 varieties of wild flowers, to the land of cream and splits and pasties and saffron buns. This is the county of places world famous for their beauty. St. Ives, St. Blasey, St. Colum, St. Hilary, St. Moores, St. Germans, St. Anthony and Roseland. More saints in Cornwall, they say, than there are in heaven. This is the corner of England that is hardly English at all, washed on two sides by the Atlantic rollers, almost cut off from the mainland to the east by the river Tamar. To visit Cornwall for the first time is to visit a foreign country, a country of strange legend and tradition. Only 200 years ago, the Cornish spoke their own Celtic language, the language of the ancient Britons. Even today, dialect words and place names remain as a reminder of their bygone culture. Four thousand years ago, Ibernians from the Mediterranean came to Cornwall. They settled on the rock-bound shores and left their legacy of chambered tombs and stone circles. Then came the Celts, trading in Cornish iron and tin with merchants from across the seas. From Wales and Ireland came missionaries preaching a new faith, establishing places of worship centuries before the churches were founded. Symbolic of the struggles between Christianity and the surviving pagan peoples is the monastic fortress of St. Michael's Mount, where all through the Middle Ages pilgrims paid homage at the sacred shrine. From the sea, the Cornishman has rested a living for centuries. But the sea also can be his worst enemy. The Coast Guards will tell you that when the Atlantic gales are at their height, they have to crawl on all fours to their cabins on the cliffs. In the villages along the Iron Coast, the saving of human life is an almost routine job. Scarcely a week passes in the winter months that a Cornish lifeboat puts to sea with her voluntary crew. Tiny coves between the barriers of rock, Porthguara, Mullion, Lamorna, Mausel, and many others, are the centers of a communal fishing life. The Cornish fisherman earns no wages. He owns his own boat and pools the proceeds of his catch with his colleagues. The staple catches are lobster and crab, but when there's no catch, there's no money either. St. Ives is the headquarters of the pilchard fishery. Until a few years ago, the pilchard shoals came close inshore each summer. But now, for some unexplained reason, they no longer frequent the bay, and the motor drifters must go many miles to sea in search of them. Most ancient of Cornwall's industries is tin. Two thousand years ago, the men of Cornwall were trading in tin, and through the centuries they have handed down their tradition of mining skill. Some of the mines have been worked far out under the bed of the sea. Sometimes only a few feet of rock separates the miner from the sea above, and in heavy weather he can hear the thunder of the waves above his head. Round St. Austell, the white granite pits have brought a new prosperity to Cornwall. For embedded in the granite is a special clay called china clay, a substance needed in a host of modern industrial processes. Despite its name, only a small quantity of china clay is made into pottery. It is chiefly used for putting the glaze on high-grade paper. But it's needed too in the manufacture of rubber, imitation leather, toothpaste, face powder, and many other things.
China clay is an industry unique to Cornwall, and so to the little ports of Poi and Charlestown has brought a new export trade. This is Cornish wrestling, the traditional recreation when the day's work is done. The rules lay down that there shall be no rounds. Every fight must be fought continuously to a finish. The wrestlers wear a special jacket to give their opponents a better grip. Such is the Cornwall of every day, but with the coming of summer, Cornwall and her people throw aside their daily routine to welcome a host of visitors. Along the hundred miles of windswept cliff and headland, the coast guards are outnumbered by an army of hikers. To the west, the Bay of St. Ives becomes a happy hunting ground for fishermen after mackerel and conger, bass and pollock. The yachtsmen, the broad stretches of the Fal estuary, the intricate creeks of the Foy and Helford rivers. To the north are the wide bathing beaches of Newquay, and at a hundred points along the coast, the sandy coves lie waiting for those who know them. For the lovers of silence, there are the open stretches of moorland, Henbarrow, Bodmin Moor, Boonhilly Downs, rich in the symbols of Cornwall's history. <laughs> <laughs> 